What is geese farming? Geese farming is the production, raising or keeping of geese like other domestic poultry birds such as chickens. Goose offers animal products such as meat, feathers, eggs, and fat, which transform it into a highly coveted and profitable poultry enterprise. Geese, like ducks, are raised for meat purposes. They are more easily and profitably grown than ducks, owing to the fact that they subsist very largely on grass and other tender green food during the growing season. For this reason it is essential to have abundant pasture. Low rough land is sometimes provided, but some that is high and well drained should be available when they wish to get away from the dampness. From 15 to 50 geese are allowed to an acre of land. The raising of geese in large numbers is somewhat limited by the market. In sections of the Middle West where geese are fattened commercially, or near some of the eastern cities that have a large foreign population, there is a fairly good market. Geese are very hardy, and, for this reason, can be housed very cheaply as they need protection only during very cold or stormy weather. In the warmer parts of the country no shelter is necessary. They require very little care throughout the year. When many geese use the same pasture with cattle they will contaminate the land to such an extent that the cattle will refuse to eat the grass. Even with a few geese, it is better to give them a separate pasture. They should not be turned in a young orchard, for they are likely to injure the bark of the trees. Is it profitable to raise geese? Overall, for most people geese are going to be more of a hobby, not a profitable side business. How long does it take to raise a goose for meat? When raising geese for meat, finishing takes from 3 to 5 weeks, and should be accompanied by confining the birds in an area where they cannot roam, and burn off that extra plumpness you wish to encourage. Foie gras. French for liver fat is a specialty food product made of the liver of a duck or goose. According to French law, foie gras is defined as the liver of a duck or goose fattened by gavage, force feeding. Foie gras is a popular and well-known delicacy in French cuisine. Its flavor is described as rich, buttery, and delicate, unlike that of an ordinary duck or goose liver. Foie gras is sold whole or is prepared into mousse, parfait, or pate, and may also be served as an accompaniment to another food item, such as steak. French law states that foie gras belongs to the protected cultural and gastronomical heritage of France. The technique of gavage dates as far back as 2500 BC, when the ancient Egyptians began keeping birds for food, and deliberately fattened the birds through force feeding. Today France is by far the largest producer and consumer of foie gras, though there are producers and markets worldwide, particularly in other European nations, the United States, and China. Gavage-based foie gras production is controversial, due mainly to the animal welfare concerns about force feeding, intensive housing and husbandry, and enlarging the liver to ten times its usual volume. A number of countries and jurisdictions have laws against force feeding, as well as the production, import, or sale of foie gras. In the 21st century, France is by far the largest producer and consumer of foie gras that is produced and consumed in several other countries worldwide, particularly in some other European nations, the United States, and China. Approximately 30,000 people work in the French foie gras industry, with 90% of them residing in the Périgord, Dordogne, Aquitaine in the southwest, and Alsace in the east. The European Union recognizes the foie gras produced according to traditional farming methods, label rouge, in southwestern France, with a protected geographical indication. Hungary is the world's second largest foie gras producer and the largest exporter. France is the principal market for Hungarian foie gras mainly exported raw. Approximately 30,000 Hungarian goose farmers are dependent on the foie gras industry. French food companies spice, process, and cook the foie gras, so it may be sold as a French product in its domestic and export markets. The basis of foie gras production is the ability that some waterfowl have to expand their esophagus and to gain weight, particularly in the liver, in preparation for migration. Wild geese may consume 300 grams of protein and another 800 grams of grasses per day. Farmed geese allowed to graze on carrots adapt to eating 100 grams of protein but may consume up to 2500 grams of the carrots per day. The increasing amount of feed given prior to force feeding and during the force feeding itself cause expansion of the lower part of the esophagus. Geese are easily fattened in the late autumn and early winter. Corn, in the most convenient form, should be fed abundantly. This should be supplemented with chopped vegetables, grit, and water. A wet mash composed of cornmeal and milling can also be used. Although this produces a nicely fattened goose, it requires considerable labor. Geese and ducks are often processed in automated chicken or turkey plants that can handle birds of larger size than conventional broiler chickens. The plants are often equipped with semi-automated primary feather pullers and baths of molten wax for removing down feathers. Feather removal can be particularly difficult in waterfowl, and it often determines the optimum killing age of the bird. The feathers become more difficult to pull as a bird gets older. Dry salted fermented duck is a traditional product that is popular in China because of its special flavor. 
the traditional technology of producing dry salted duck is characterized by handcrafted salting and natural drying, which limited the production scale. New processing techniques have been introduced to improve the traditional technology and quality of dry salted duck. The typical yield of usable meat from a butchered goose is 70% of the carcass when gibbets are included, or 63% without gibbets. The goose is suspended upside down, typically in a funnel that allows the head to come through. The jugular veins are cut on either side of the neck, although the head should not be cut off. After the bleeding is complete, the goose can be dry plucked, but dry plucking is very labor extensive. Alternatively, geese can be plucked using a process and equipment similar to that used for chickens and turkeys. The carcass is first dipped in scald water to loosen the feathers. Large wing and tail feathers are removed by hand, and then the carcass is put into a plucking machine. Removal of all the down and pin feathers is usually accomplished with a wax dip. The carcass is dipped in a wax bath for one to two minutes. The carcass is then dipped in cold water to harden the wax. The carcass is then dipped in the hot wax a second time, and again dipped in cold water to harden the second layer of wax. The wax is then stripped from the carcass either by hand or with a dewaxing machine. The principles for slaughtering and processing non-traditional species are the same as for the main livestock species. The animals have to be handled and slaughtered in a humane manner and their carcasses dressed, stored and transported hygienically. The main differences between the species lie in the way they are handled while still alive, in the approach used in skin removal and in the butchery lines used for the dressed carcass. Evisceration before jointing is the usual procedure in abattoirs if the meat is to be sold for meat consumption, but notable exceptions are the camel and the crocodile, where meat is often taken off the unevisserated skinned body. In Europe, Northern Africa and Western Asia, the original domesticated geese are derived from the greylag goose. In Eastern Asia, the original domesticated geese are derived from the swan goose, these are commonly known as Chinese geese. Both have been widely introduced in more recent times, and modern flocks in both areas, and elsewhere, such as Australia and North America, may consist of either species or hybrids between them. Chinese geese may be readily distinguished from European geese by the large knob at the base of the bill, though hybrids may exhibit every degree of variation between the two species. Geese fossils have been found ranging from 10 to 12 million years ago. Fossils found in the Gargano region of central Italy suggest the existence of a prehistoric relative of the goose that stood one and a half meters tall. The evidence suggests the bird was flightless, unlike modern geese. Gavage-based foie gras production is controversial due to the animal welfare consequences of the force-feeding procedure, intensive housing and husbandry, an enlarged liver, and the potential for being detrimental to human health. Some countries find foie gras to be morally objectionable. 98 which one EU committee report noted that up to 1998, there was only a small number of scientific studies on the welfare of birds used for foie gras production, however, the committee found sufficient evidence to conclude that force feeding, as currently practiced, is detrimental to the welfare of the birds. The industry repeatedly faces accusations of torture and cruelty. Most foie gras producers do not consider their methods cruel, insisting that it is a natural process exploiting the animal's natural features. Producers argue that wild ducks and geese naturally ingest large amounts of whole food and gain weight before migration. They claim that geese and ducks do not have a gag reflex in their throats the same way that humans do and therefore do not appear to find force feeding uncomfortable.